in order for Miami to win, though, it, it, it's not going to be off of Jimmy Butler. It's going to be my main man, Swaggy T. It's going to have to keep playing the way he's been playing throughout his playoffs, keep knocking down those shots. And uh, if Swaggy T does what, what he did against the, against the Bucks, then Miami is going to take that, that thing in seven games. Swaggy T? Yeah, 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 we had Swaggy P, but now we got Swaggy Listen, P, my main man Tyler Hero. That's pretty funny. That guy is – that guy. Hey, I'm going to tell you guys, and I, I texted my friend this, that guy has all-star potential. Oh, yeah. And, Listen. And the, reason, and the reason is, if he played in the 90s, guys would just back him down, right? So, But his weaknesses aren't as profound in the 2020s, you know what I mean? And everything he does well just translates so well in the modern NBA. And he and he's and he has a killer instinct too. On top of that, so yeah, I think he has all. I honestly think Tyler Hero has all star level potential. He's definitely not afraid. Of I, I agree. Right, I agree with you, Combo. I know you put it up recently as a survey as well. Um, yeah. And I'm gonna use a cross sports analogy because in, in football, whenever we want to know if somebody has the the confidence to play the quarterback position, one of the first things old scouts will tell you is, "What does his girlfriend look like?" Because if he's got a hot girlfriend. That means he's got, a, he's got the confidence to lead the team on the field. I, I kid you not. That's an old school mentality. If his girlfriend is hot, well, he does he's a legitimate. I've seen the shorty. And, and that's why, and that's why it, we call but, him. But, but, but is there beauty on. in the eye of the beholder? Well, listen. <laughs> oh, hold we, on, wait. We, we, could, we, could, we could generalize it. We all know what's hot and what's not. Let, <laughs> let's not fool ourselves, right? So, as, as Tripp said, I, I've seen Swaggy T's girlfriend. And uh, the, the kid's got some confidence. So, I like him a lot, and I agree with you. I think he will make at least one all-star game, but I do think he's going to be big in this series if Miami expects a win. Now, I, I picked Boston before the playoffs started. I'm going with Boston to win this series in six, but I think it's going to come down to Tyler Hero, to uh, Duncan Robinson, and I think it's also going to come down to Kelly Olynyk. And the reason I named those three guys is those three guys are very weak defensively. But if they're able to contribute offensively, then they can eliminate – anything that they give up defensively. Because I think what Boston presents is a, is a big challenge on the wings with Tatum, with Brown, with Walker, with Smart, and then getting Gordon Hayward back. At any time during the game, they have three to four ball handlers. And if Duncan Robinson, Tyler Hero, or Kelly Olynyk's on the floor, that's who they're going to be attacking. So those guys have to play well offensively to alleviate what they're going to give up defensively. Which is crazy because Olynyk was, was more of a defensive player when he was in Boston. He loved Boston, and they, you know, he got turned to all right. big. Right. He's, I mean, because we know, and, and, and Combo has pointed this out before, and I completely agree with him. Boston is only going to play seven, maybe eight guys. They're not going deep into the rotation. It's going to be the same guys on the court all the time. So if you're Spolstra, you got to figure out a way. Again, if Duncan Robinson, he didn't have a big series against Milwaukee, understandable. But also Milwaukee didn't have anybody who could pressure him defensively. They didn't have anybody who can attack him and force him to play defense. Yeah. Spolstra is going to have to figure out spots where it's like, can I leave him on the floor? Because he's going to be matched up with one of these wing guys. And if, if he's matched up with Jalen Brown at some point, Brown is going to go at him. If he's matched up against Tatum or Smart or Kemba, they're going to attack him. So he's not a guy who can just float around and I don't have to defend anybody. I'm clearly out here for, for threes. He's going to have to play defense. Same thing with Tyler Hero. Same thing with Kelly O'Lennon. Now, question. Bam's rim, protection, Bam, Bam's rim protection helps with all that, though, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bam is amazing. Don't get me wrong. But don't, but don't, Bam, Bam is amazing. And and Bam, and Bam could sit in the lane because he could guard Tice. Right. He's he's gonna yeah. he's gonna be matched up with Tice. Um, yeah. On the flip side of that, uh, I think um, Boston's gonna have to figure out a way to give Tice some rest. Whether it's with Williams, I I don't even think Cantor could really play is, in this. Is what, how's Williams' put, uh, percentage been from the outside? He's he struggled everywhere. Yeah, so not that, just so Bam, so Bam, <laughs> right? So Bam could still lay down in the lane. You know, Bam, that's Bam is going to be able to. Yeah, Bam's going to be yeah. able to float around and almost play free safety and, and try to clean up everything. And that's that's um, tough. That's tough. For yeah. Celtics. Yeah, yeah. And, and and Tyus can't get in foul trouble like he did in a couple games against Toronto because they don't have anybody else they can really rely on. This is one of those series that Cantor is not going to be able to play in because we know Miami's just going to put him in a bunch of pick and rolls and I pick love, and pop situations. Yeah. It's funny because I love Cantor's game, but he just can't play in these series because he's a bucket. I agree. Man. That guy's I agree. a bucket. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that guy, yo, that guy is so, yo, that guy is so underrated as the offensive talent. Straight bucket scoring yeah. on anybody, but he can't, he can't guard the perimeter. You know. That's a fact. All right. So, question yeah. for you guys: uh, 
who who wins the coaching battle? Because now we're talking about two of the, the top uh, younger coaches in basketball with Spolstra and, uh, and and Brad Stevens. So, you know, you just said that Kansas is probably going to be the odd man out in this series. So who wins the coaching war? I'm biased because a friend of mine is one of the coaches for the Heat, but I do know that they're <laughs> – I do know that their culture is just different than everybody else in the NBA. So I would go with the heat just from what they do from beginning till end and just the way they set culture. And then Jimmy on top of that has brought even that culture to another level, you know, like it was just, it was just such a great match. So I would take the heat in that department, but Brad Stevens is great. You know? Yeah. For me, I'm going to say Brad Stevens because again, he's working with with a smaller lineup. So when you're only coaching up, seven maybe eight guys you've got to be the x's and old guys so he's gonna i think he's gonna really win a battle on out of bounds plays out of timeout plays those possessions that could kind of swing the game a little bit that's where he's gonna really show that he's the better coach for me anyway but you know we got to see i like it so you guys are both uh combo i know you said you got miami and seven trip you said you got miami and seven as well and i'm leaning towards miami um i just I, you know, because I the only, I, the only thing the only the trip the only thing wrong with our Miami pick is that the Bucks might have been just such a great matchup for Miami. Yeah, like that's the only thing I'm worried about. You know. Yeah, and 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 that's why I'm still kind of on the fence. However, right. I thought that Miami would give the Bucks trouble, but I, I thought that that the Bucks would have still been able to pull it out in the seven game series. I thought it would have won seven, but the Bucks ultimately would have won. I didn't think that that Miami would dominate them from the jump the way they did. Because honestly, if if Giannis doesn't get injured in Game Four, I still feel like Miami sweeps the series, which is which means that you know they just completely outplayed them, completely outcoached them. So that wow. So you me- thought so you thought the Giannis was a roadblock for the Bucks? Wow. Yeah. Well, I'm just no, no. I thought he was a roadblock, but I'm just saying when he went the out, MVP though. He's yeah. the MVP. But when he went out with the injury at the end of uh, of game four, I think Miami got a little right. lax because they were like, oh, this thing is over. Giannis ain't even here no more. And, that's their and also and, and also the, the offense was more balanced. It wasn't just Giannis yeah. taking it from the top. Exactly. And, yeah, definitely. I agree with but you. They, yeah, but but the way they, they completely dominated Miami, I mean, excuse me, they completely dominated the Bucks the whole series – which even would shock me a little bit more because I thought they would give them trouble because they were the only team to beat them to have a winning record against the Bucks in, in the Eastern Conference. So I thought they would give them, you know, a, a run, but I thought the Bucks would still get the W. But the way they performed in that series, they're they're hot right now going into into the Eastern Conference Finals. Um, and not that the that that Boston isn't playing well right now, but Miami's been more consistent throughout the playoffs. Than, than Boston has. Boston's kind of been up and down in the series because realistically, we should have been, it should have been 3 0 Boston in this series. If uh, if Jalen Brown doesn't doesn't let let um, OG, uh, OG. OG get off that three to, to at the buzzer to, 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 to take game three, we're looking at a 3 0 series and we didn't get that. And ultimately, that wound up leading to us going to game seven down the wire. Well, I'm, well, I'm going to yeah, say this. I- I think uh, I don't want to put too much in the fact that they went seven with Toronto because there were two games in that series that they could have put them away because game three, obviously, OG makes the big shot. And game six, Boston had an opportunity to put them away. And then obviously the heart of a champion showed up and Toronto pushed it out. If not for that, that series is over in five games. And I think we're talking about Boston differently. But that's why yeah, I, I, because it didn't because it did if it went that way I would be I would agree yeah, with but, you more. But we but, can't we can't penalize Boston for that because Boston's playing the defending champs. The defending champs they gonna fight to defend that title. Yeah, but they playing one thing what what they and it's still the same team as it was last year. Yeah, the OG the OG shot totally changed the series. But one thing I will say I think Boston's top four players are better than Miami's top four players. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. Oh, Completely. Definitely. Yeah, so, so that, I mean, Tatum, uh, Jalen Brown. <laughs> so yeah, so that so it's really it's really I mean, and Bam and Jimmy and Tyler are all great. I mean, well, Tyler will be great. I wouldn't say he's great yet, but he's yeah, he's he's, he's well. on the way. He's on the way there. But I mean, the top four players. I would say I, I would say it's like Heat culture versus talent and the four better players. You know, 
So it, it really, it, it's tough. It's tough. But if I had to guess it, I would say Miami in seven. But man, it could go either way. Yeah, I, I, I'm taking Boston in six, but I think it's going to be a great series. And I think that even though Miami was an upset over Milwaukee, we are seeing the two best teams in the East. Yeah. And, and everything they've shown so far throughout the playoffs solidifies that. They, they are the two best teams in the East, and we're seeing it now. Oh, fuck off. This is your African king of comedy, Michael Blackson. You're watching real fans do a talk. Get real with it, my son.